entertaining talking sports. What is going on, football fans? Back at it with another New York Giants video. And in this video, I'm going to jump into some of the players that the Giants may or may not look to trade as the trade deadline is quickly approaching in the NFL. The trade deadline, I think, is just eight short days away. If I'm not mistaken, I believe it's on Election Day on Tuesday, November 3rd. So the Giants will have to make up their mind very quickly about whether or not they're going to want to try to acquire more draft assets for the rest of the season. The way it looks right now, the New York Giants, as bad as they've been at 1-6, and six, just sit one and a half games out of the division. But if you ask me what would be the smart and prudent approach for the New York Giants, it would be to try to trade away some of these players right now to try to give, you guys, to try to give the football team as many assets as they possibly can going forward. Now, how will they determine which players should be traded? Well, if you're the New York Giants, you have to look at some of the players and you have to say to yourself, are these guys going to be a future of this football team? And if they're not, you look to get what you can. And there's a number of players that are on short-term deals that they could look to trade that they may or may not bring back. Now, where this gets tricky is we don't know if Dave Gettleman is going to be the general manager for this football team next year. And I doubt that he's been given a guarantee based off the fact that the Giants are off to a 1-6 starts. So Dave Gettleman very well could be making this trade. Say, setting it up for the next guy that's going to take over his job, and we'll have to see if Dave does keep his job at year's end. But when you look at the New York Giants roster right now, there are not a lot of premium pieces. Like a lot of people say we should do what the Dolphins did. Well, the Dolphins had Laramie Tunsil. The Dolphins had Minka Fitzpatrick. Those are the types of players that were young, still early in their contracts. Well, not so much Tunsil, but more so uh, Fitzpatrick. They were able to net you a lot of draft capital. The New York Giants don't have a player on this roster outside of possibly a healthy Saquon Barkley that's going to be able to net you a first-round pick, at least in my opinion. And Saquon Barkley, of course, will not be traded due to the fact that he has an ACL tear right now, and I think the New York Giants still view him as a part of the future if and when he can come back healthy for the Giants in 2021. Players that you're looking to trade, I always say you're looking to sell high and you're looking to buy low. Well, a lot of people are saying right now that the New York Giants need to trade Evan Ingram, and believe me, I'm just as discouraged with Evan Ingram as everybody else. The New York Giants have come out and said that they're not looking to trade Evan Ingram, but that doesn't mean much. Of course, Odell Beckham, they said they weren't going to trade him either. They ended up trading Odell Beckham like two or three weeks later. So Ingram could easily be traded, but what I think the Giants are doing here is they're trying to play hardball. They're not trying to seem desperate, nor should they. I'm not giving away Evan Ingram, even though a lot of Gi Giants fans want him off the team as soon as possible for nothing. Okay, at the end of the day, you could still get compensated if he bounces back and has a good year in 2022, maybe a third or fourth round comp pick. And right now, Daniel Jones doesn't have a lot of weapons to begin with. Evan Ingram has not been good. Matter of fact, he's been downright horrible. He has the most drops in football at the tight end position since he's entered the league in 2017, and he's missed 14 games during that span. And this year, he has just 223 yards in seven contests and zero touchdowns. Which goes back to my point, if you were to trade Evan Ingram right now, unless you were to, go, to get blown away and somebody's willing to give you more than what he's probably worth right now, you're selling low, and you're not getting probably what you should. Now, if you get a third-round pick for Evan Ingram, you think long and hard about doing it, but I'm not personally doing it for a fourth-round pick. You still have Evan Ingram on a cost-effective deal next year, and right now we're complaining about the weapons that the New York Giants have. Yes, he drops a lot of balls. Yes, I can't stand Evan Ingram half the time when he's out there on the football field. He's a guy with talent that has not reached his potential while he's been in the NFL. Okay, and he's not going to be a guy of the next GM that takes over. So maybe the New York Giants do decide to trade him, but I think you have to get fair compensation. I'm not giving him away for a fifth-round draft pick. Now, if you get a second-round draft pick, you run at the opportunity. Much like Mohamed Sanu last year, you found a desperate team with the New England Patriots that was willing to trade a second-round pick to get him. Well, maybe there's a team out there that desperately needs a weapon. There's certainly a lot of teams in playoff contention that could use some weapons. Some teams off the top of my head, the New Orleans Saints, the Indianapolis Colts, the Green Bay Packers, there's a number of others that could try to bring some more punch to that offense that lack weaponry. And maybe there will be a team that bites. But unless somebody's willing to pay more than they probably should for Evan Ingram at this point in time because his value is at an ultimate low, you look at the production he's put up compared to the other tight ends in the league, he's not he's not there. So you'd be selling low when you probably your objective should be to sell high. The next guy we're going to talk about is Leonard Williams. And to me, he's a he's a sell high candidate. And one, you have to, again, determine about whether or not Leonard Williams is going to be on your team going forward. Leonard Williams, I think, has three sacks this year. He's been one of the best players on the New York Giants defense. And the Giants, of course, traded a lot to bring him in. And a lot of people don't want to hear about trading away good players and players that have made an impact on this team. But the question you have to ask yourself is, is Leonard Williams in a contract year where he was motivated to put up numbers 
worthy of getting a contract similar to what he's getting paid right now this year on a three or four year basis. It's what you have to ask yourself. You also have to ask yourself, is the new GM who may or may not be taking over Dave Gettleman's job philosophy to keep a player like Leonard Williams? And we don't know that. But at the end of the day, it's up to Gettleman about whether or not he's going to trade him. Now, Gettleman, of course, traded for Leonard Williams last year. So I'd be surprised if they were to trade him this offseason. Maybe you get a second round pick for him. You're probably looking at more like a third. He probably is the best piece that the New York Giants have to offer out there right now in the open market. I would not expect him to be traded because the main reason, like I said, even though he may not be in the long-term plans if we're going to move on from Gettleman, Gettleman did trade for him last year, and I wouldn't expect Dave Gettleman would, would trade trade him away after he's having a good year and is making him look you know, pretty good after making the trade, even though the trade wasn't great. Leonard Williams is definitely producing for the New York Giants. So I don't think I'd expect Gettleman to trade him away. If I was to get a second-round pick for him again, i run at the opportunity. I would say his trade value right now is probably a third-round pick. And you may not even get that. Uh, but those are probably our two biggest names, like I've talked about extensively before. Now, there's a number of other players that the New York Giants could trade. We'll talk about the wide receivers, Sterling Shepard and Golden Tate. And in my opinion, if you could get a decent, you know, a fifth-round pick for these guys, you probably run at the opportunity. A lot of people say, how could you trade away Sterling Shepard for a fifth-round pick? Well, Sterling Shepard is a guy that makes a lot of money, and you're still committed to him probably for two more years when you look at the dead cap. But he has an extensive injury history, and he hasn't been able to stay on the field. If you were able to trade him, you would free up an additional 10 or 11 million dollars in salary cap on next year's roster so you have to think long and hard if you did get an offer and there may be teams willing to give you something for a guy like Sterling Shepard and maybe you package him in a deal with somebody else and you get a better draft pick um Golden Tate fifth or sixth round pick I'm running at the opportunity he's going to cost you five million dollars on a dead cap it next year in which you're probably not going to keep him anyway hasn't produced a ton he's been traded before the Eagles traded for him just two years ago when they were looking to add some punch at that slot wide receiver position I'd be more inclined to try to trade Golden Tate than Shepard because he's older and he's definitely going to be off the team next year Shepard when he's on the field produces but again you have to give up something to get something and the reward for the Giants would be freeing up a lot of cap space um off his throwing Shepard's salary in an extension that that right now does not look like a wise decision by the New York Giants with Sterling Shepard. So I'd be open to trading either one of those individuals. Don't expect a ton back for either one, mainly because of their contracts and their extensive injury history. But both of them could potentially be traded by the New York Giants. The next guy I'm going to talk about is Logan Ryan. And again, you're not going to get a ton for a guy like Logan Ryan, but they could look to ship him out here much like they did Marcus Golden. We got a six-round pick for Marcus Golden. Maybe you would get something similar for a guy like Ryan, a fifth or a six-round pick. A lot of people look at Ryan and they'll say the same thing. He's playing good. Why would you trade him? Well, he's only on a one-year commitment, and if you loved him, you could always bring him back. Of course, we all know that he loves to play in New Jersey. He was excited to play for Joe Judge, and because of that, maybe the New York Giants won't trade him. Maybe they want to say this guy's going to be a leader of this team going forward. We want him to play. You have Xavier McKinney coming off the injured list very soon, and it could open up a spot for him to get more reps. If you were to trade a guy like Logan Ryan, and Logan Ryan might be able to draft you, might be able to net you rather a fifth round draft pick. Being that he's displayed, he's still a productive player. The team doesn't need a commitment through one year. And if a team feels like they need some help at that position, maybe they're willing to bite on a fifth round pick. Wouldn't expect much more than that, though. The other players I wrote down were Kevin Zeitler, Jabril Peppers, and Dalvin Tomlinson. And we'll go over all of them. Jabril Peppers is a guy that's been injured a bit, seems to always be hurt, but he's still a versatile piece. He's still a guy with upside. He's still relatively young, and you still have him under a cost-effective contract for another year. I'm not looking to trade away Jabril Peppers, but if I get an offer that blows me away, I probably have to do it. If you give me a second round pick for Jabril Peppers in next year's draft, I'm probably trading him. But again, I'm not actively shopping him. If teams are coming at me to get him, I will, I, I'd be open to trading him, but I'm not actively shopping him. If I get a second round pick, I'd probably do it, and he is an attractive player because of his upside and because he has a cost-effective deal for another year after this for a team looking to acquire him. The Giants, do I think that Peppers will be in the long-term plans? Probably not. Um, because he's probably going to command a large salary if he does stay healthy and plays well next year, similar to a guy like Landon Collins. But we'll have to wait and see how that plays out. The Giants could always get a compensation pick for him if he were to command that kind of salary and would get a uh, compensation pick in the 99 to 105 range, similar to what they did with Landon Collins. And then that finally leaves you with, like I said, Dalvin Tomlinson and Kevin Zeitler. Dalvin Tomlinson, to me, is a player I really love. He's a free agent next year, and the New York Giants don't have him under control. He may cost 10 to $12 million on the free agency market. I could be wrong, but that would be what I would estimate what he would cost. I have Leo around 16 to $17 million, and I've always said that the New York Giants are not going to be able to keep both of these players. And you have to ask yourself, if you're a New York Giant fan, if you're not going to keep Dalvin Thompson for that price tag, if you're 
mindset is you want to keep Leonard Williams, well, then maybe the better idea would be to trade Dalvin Tomlinson. But you're not going to get as much for a player like Tomlinson, mainly because he's strictly a nose tackle. And not a lot of teams in the NFL value that position as much as they do a guy that could get after the quarterback. I like DT, but again, if you get a fifth-round pick for him, similar like we did with a guy like um, Snacks Harrison, you probably do it. Uh, if, if he's not in the long-term plans. If he's in the long-term plans, of course, you're not going to trade him. But the New York Giants will have to come you know, to an agreement about whether or not they want to keep guys like Leonard Williams and Dalvin Tomlinson going forward. And then finally, Kevin Zeitler. Kevin Zeitler, a lot of people say, how could you trade him? The offensive line has been so bad. Well, Kevin Zeitler next year carries only a $2 million dead cap, so he's attractive for a team that would be trading him. They'd be able to get rid of him and, and bring in somebody else, a team that's in contention, maybe a team like the Bucks that feels like maybe they need a little bit more punch on that offensive line at the guard position. And Zeitler, I'm sure, would field offers. Again, it has to be a deal worth making. If you could get, you know, if you get a second or a third round pick for a guy like Kevin Zeitler, you probably do it. The New York Giants, the reason for trading him is one, you may cut him next year anyway because he only carries a $2 million dead cap and it would free up, I think, 10 to $12 million on your salary cap. And you have his replacement on the roster. Of course, the New York Giants used a fifth round pick this year on an offensive lineman that would step in and you would assume would fill his spot at the guard spot with Shane Lemieux. So we'll have to wait and see. Of course, it's all going to come down to about whether or not the New York Giants feel like Lemieux is ready to take that step forward. But if they do, don't be shocked if Kevin Zeitler is traded at the trade deadline. And of course, like I said, the New York Giants could maybe try to combine some of these players to maybe try to get a second round pick. Say you trade a Zeitler and, uh, you know, Golden Tate. You put them together. Maybe you could get a second round pick out of it. Who knows? But I think all these guys could potentially be traded by the trade deadline, obviously some more likely than others. As far as Evan Ingram goes, like I said, I think the New York Giants right now are not trying to show their hand, and if they get an offer that they feel is worthy, they'd probably be open to, tra uh, open to trading a player like Evan Ingram. But we'll have to wait and see how it all plays out as we're just eight short days away from the NFL trade deadline. I'll be live tonight, by the way, and if you guys want to come by, come on over for the live stream. I want to say thank you to everybody that blew up the live stream last night. Thank you guys for being the best supporters on YouTube. Probably should have said that at the beginning of the video. As always, guys, if you like what you watch, please subscribe, drop a comment, maybe give me a little thumbs up. Cheers.